Friends, uh, welcome to this uh, third day of the National Education Policy 2020 Implementation Professional Development Program. This is the third day of the conferencing. This is the third teleconferencing, a chart-based conferencing interactive with you. We have with us Professor Chandrabhushan Sama, who is Director, School of Education of Indira Gandhi National Open University, and who has also been, besides past almost 35 years of experience, he has been the chairperson of National Institute of Open Schooling. So um, with this, let me invite uh, Professor Samaji to speak on this time, to speak on autonomy and governance. So uh, Professor Samaji, over to you. Thank you so much, Professor Panda. Thank you. Namaskar. Aap sabho ka swagat hai. Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Mukta Vishwadhyalaya ke is karikram ke mein jo Vishwadhyalaya Anudan Ayog ke tahat chal raha hai. Uh, I'm so very grateful to the organizers for inviting me and to ask me to speak on autonomy and governance of higher education institutions. Autonomy is the backbone of education, especially higher education. And so this is very close to the hearts of all those who are serious academics and are in the planning process of education. I must say, I have been part of the writing of the national education policy and you will find that autonomy has been built into the whole system right from the beginning. I will today confine myself to talking only about autonomy in higher education, referring to the school education sector from time to time, but then I will confine myself to talking on higher education and autonomy and governance. But before I really take up the issues that have been dealt with, uh, let me ask a question. What is autonomy? Whose autonomy? I must make a comment right at the beginning. Autonomy is not anarchy. Autonomy doesn't mean anarchy. And what I mean by that, I'll come to later. Autonomy of the learners, autonomy of the teachers and faculty, Autonomy of the administrators of the institution, higher education, or the systemic autonomy. What do we mean by autonomy? Let me take one by one. We have, we have been talking about a student's autonomy. So, let us examine what students want from the system. For all these years, you will find we have very strict selection of subjects. Like if you are a student of science, then you are only allowed to take physics, chemistry, mathematics or biology and very few other combinations. If you decide to go for humanities and social science, you are not able to or you are not allowed to study any paper which is within the discipline or department of science. Like a student who wants to study economics is not allowed to take mathematics or physics because that belongs to the science discipline. But these are all about the established disciplines that we have in the universities. I must tell you, this policy intends or has a vision, darshan. We don't have a real translation for darshan in English. तो इस नीति का जो दर्शन है वो ये कि 2040 का भारत ऐसा हो जिसमें 64 कलाओं में हमारे बच्चे हमारे विद्यार्थी और फिर हमारा देश दुनिया में सबसे आगे हो। So the issue is not only of physics, chemistry, biology, economics. It is also about arts, dance, painting, martial arts, and all different areas. Fabric design. Textile in which we were the best. आपने उपनिषद पढ़ा होगा विकु का नाम सुनेंगे। विकु दुनिया का माना हुआ कुमार था जिसके बनाए हुए मिट्टी के बर्तन दुनिया भर में मांगे जाते थे और दुनिया भर में जाता था। ऐसा कैसे हो पाया? Unless and until we develop the science of or the studies of pottery in schools as well as higher education, how would we able to 
create individuals who are the best in the world in these areas, what we have been calling Chonsat Kalaye. Bharat mein dunya ke best sangeetkar, natakar, kaise banenge agar hum inko vidyalay aur vishu vidyalayon mein nahi laenge. To ye sari cheeze jo vidyartiyon ke swayattata ka prashan hai, the autonomy of the learner uh, has been inbuilt and uh, if you read um, the sections 10.12, what it, has, it says is all new areas will be introduced as clubs. I must mention here, I have talked about these areas on uh, various platforms and people have asked from where would we get the teachers? From where would we get the experts who would do it? So the policy was aware of it and policy had in mind. So what it says is towards the beginning when we start, we will have clubs in the institutions. The students will start working in these areas like it has been mentioned in 10.12 uh, uh, that it will have uh, clubs for all different areas where students would like to work, like creative areas. Uh, let me read uh, the areas that have been mentioned in 12.3, uh, like social domains and inside and outside formal academic instruction. Such Over time, such activities could be incorporated into the curriculum that first few years these will remain as clubs and then they will become a subject which will become part of the curriculum. How it will become part of the curriculum? I will talk about it when we come to the autonomy of the institution. So you can see the roadmap. Initially all different areas of knowledge would be open to students. Even if there is no faculty member, perhaps the students can start working on these through clubs. Once they have done substantial work, they would be able to convert it into curriculum and some of them will go, get into teaching of these subjects by the time they graduate. The obvious question would be how would colleges do it? Now I am shifting to the second part. Uh, how would colleges or institution do it? What the policy says is that all colleges and institutions of higher education will get graded autonomy. If you look at autonomy in terms of institutions lead 13.4 freedom to design and develop curriculum. How will that happen? Institutions will become autonomous which will be done in a phased manner depending upon their contribution and their performance. Some of the college will get autonomy but some would be working under the mentorship of the universities. So the autonomous colleges will be free to decide and design the curriculum for these subjects and also perform and take these as, 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 as subjects and teach them. How would that work? Autonomous colleges will have a board of governors. Read chapter 19 where this has been clearly delineated that every college will have a board of governors. The, Head of the institution will be heading the board of governors. Like if, if, if the, there is a college, the college principal will be the head of the board of governors. The previous principal will be member of it, members of the society, those who employ our graduates, those who are alumni, students, staff, teachers will all be part of it. The major criticism of our system has been that those who are not part of the institution or system, they decide on issues of appointments, of curriculum, like we have the system of uh, affiliating institution. So the university decides on the curriculum and tells the colleges to transact it. That wouldn't happen. The college will have its own committees. At, at the top will be the board of governors and then would be have, will, will be the department committees which will be board of studies where the teacher in the college in collaboration with experts from outside in the vicinity and other areas, far flung areas will be members of the board of studies. The board of governors will approve this and that will become part of it. Ultimately, they will be able to award degree as well. 
initially they will be allowed to transact but perhaps they may not be able to award degree but as their performance increases and they become from teaching institution to teaching and research institution and from teaching and research to research institution they will be allowed to award degree as well so now you can see that the students through their clubs can decide on new courses new curriculum and that can be any area of knowledge it has been made wide open if there is a college in the hinterland in the far flung area rural area perhaps they can have agriculture or sericulture horticulture as uh, clubs ultimately they will become courses and curriculum they will then start teaching these subjects and the faculty would be developed through these exercises once that is there they will have a board of studies which will approve the curriculum and they would be able to transact and ultimately they will be able to award degree as well at the university level the university grants commission has been the apex body for higher education but then uh, there has been a lot of criticism the university grants commission was initially established to disburse the grant that was demarcated for higher education but slowly this body had to take up all the responsibility of governance regulation and all but in that process there were so many regulatory bodies also created specialized bodies like the national council for teacher education all india council for technical education the experience has been that these institutions slipped we had a justice j s verma commission in 2012 which was not very kind to the national council for teacher education and it mentioned that there are about 10000 degree awarding institutions in teacher education which sell degrees for money they do not undertake any ex extensive exercise in teaching learning i must tell you one thing this policy is a very very honest policy it is not shy or of accepting the weaknesses of the system and it also finds solutions to them so if you read 15.2 it says we will close down such institutions which have not really been able to perform and there are about two dozen uh, regulatory bodies in different areas like uh, agriculture in uh, horticulture in uh, architecture in technical education teacher education so these bodies will be closed by taking back these acts to the parliament and requesting the parliament to repeal these acts so what happens who regulates this the university grants commission will be converted into a higher education commission of india and all the powers will be vested in this regulatory body which will be a very very strong and powerful body this will have four verticals one of the verticals will be regulatory vertical the other would be accrediting vertical the third will be financing fourth will be general education council which will work on the general quality of education so now what i told you about the institutions that they will have autonomy to decide they cannot really fuzz the curriculum they cannot dilute the syllabus because the general education council of the higher education commission of india will give them guidelines the four verticals that i am mentioning about the regulatory the accrediting the financing and the general education will not be statutory and regulatory bodies as such but they will be light but tight bodies or verticals under the higher education commission of india the members of the these regulatory bodies will keep working as standard setting bodies so let us take the example of all india council for technical education or national council for technical uh, teacher education the body will remain which will be des designing or working on the standards that must be maintained in these areas the nct will work on what should be the quality of teacher education through distance mode through face to face through online education for, for uh, special education and blah 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 this will go into the council of the higher education commission of india where the, the the members of the these bodies the standard setting bodies will also be members so now you can see that presently the autonomy that is snatched from the higher education body will be vested or reinstated in these bodies this is how the system always worked 
but then it's it slowly slipped because UGC uh, UGC assumed a lot of powers and these bodies were also created through acts of parliament and uh, they had their own regulation. Now another question that I mentioned I would uh, take up later is that how will we get students in the colleges which will have or who will have uh, interest in areas where we do not have at the moment a scope for studies in higher education. The whole curriculum and the structure of school education is also changing. What is said about school education? The first thing is that education in all Indian languages will be provided at the lower primary level. Look, at the moment we have only 26.3% participation of the relevant age group in higher education, which is a shame. That means school education has failed 74%. We need to revamp the higher education, uh, school education, because we, we studied and found, found out in 2015 there was a subcommittee of the Central Advisory Board on Education set up to study the problem of out of school children. I had the privilege of being a member of it. We traveled across the country, talked to children, talked to parents and found, asked them, why did you drop the school? Every child invariably told us, kuch samaj mein nahi aata tha. Ye bachche apne schoolon mein ja rahe the, unhi ke area ke schoolon mein ja rahe the, aur phir bhi inko samaj mein kyon nahi aa raha tha. Hum jaante hain Hosangabad mein ek bada experiment kiya gaya tha, us mein bhi yehi hua tha. बच्चों को हिंदी में पढ़ाया गया हिंदी में किताबें तैयार की गई जो ट्राइबल बच्चे थे लेकिन साल के अंत में इन लोगों ने कहा कि कुछ समझ में नहीं आया इसलिए छोड़ दिए स्कूल लुक वी हैव नियरली 150 लैंग्वेजेस व्हिच हैव मोर देन 10000 स्पीकर्स बट वी डू नॉट प्रोवाइड लोअर प्राइमरी एजुकेशन इन दीस सब्जेक्ट्स आई एम फ्रॉम बिहार आई आई एम नॉट अ स्पीकर ऑफ हिंदी माय मदर टंग इज मगी इमेजिन माय प्लाइट व्हेन आई वेंट टू स्कूल फॉर द फर्स्ट डे एंड द टीचर स्टार्टेड टीचिंग इन हिंदी what would be the plight of the child who is a Santali speaker or a Khadiya speaker and goes to school and the teacher teaches in Hindi believing that all Jharkhand is Hindi speaking. This, this was the major region for children dropping out of school. The policy says all children will be brought to school at the age of three. At the moment we start schooling at the age of six and go up to 18 years. What happens to children from those families who do not have the resources to put their child in a play school or a crash at the age of three. The children of the rich and the affluent are in a teaching learning situation right from age three. The policy says we will have Anganwadis and other similar institutions because we will have to convert Anganwadis into teaching learning centers. At the moment, they are just child care centers where you have workers, not teachers taking care of them. So that will be revamped. And now we expect a large number of children to join Anganwadis and similar play school which would be known as the foundation and come up to the middle and secondary level. What are we going to do? In the foundation level, we are going to let them play with toys and imagine the world and understand the world. Just to mention very quickly, we had a great tradition of toys. We let them die because we had to import uh, toys from China. Everybody wanted to import uh, toys from China, which I will not analyze. You have, you can understand yourself. What we have decided is, or the policy says, we will collect all the different types of toys of the country, work on them, and distribute it to all the Angarwadis where children will play with these toys. I must compliment the Honorable Prime Minister. It was his idea that we must revive the culture of toys in this country. We already have organized two toyathons in the country. So these toys would be revived and children will play with them. Now they come to middle school. You can understand they will be learning in their own languages, playing with the toys which are local, which have local realities and then they will go to middle school where they will be introduced to second language. And I won't deal, deal with more. They will be allowed to study any subject, any area of knowledge that, that, that has been our tradition. When these children go to middle, they will have to do NCC. 
मौका होगा ये गेम्स एंड स्पोर्ट्स भी कर सकते हैं ये माउंटेनियरिंग और क्लाइंबिंग भी कर सकते हैं ये स्पोर्ट्स भी ले सकते हैं ये डांस भी ले सकते हैं ये म्यूजिक भी ले सकते हैं या ऐसे सारे विषय जो हम जिसको हम एरियाज ऑफ नॉलेज कहते हैं जिसको हम चौसठ कलाएं कहते थे वो सब पढ़ सकते हैं पढ़ सकते हैं क्यों संगीत एक पढ़ने का विषय नहीं हो क्यों डांस एक पढ़ने का विषय नहीं हो तो आप अब देख सकते हैं दैट दिस पॉलिसी इज इन कॉन्टिन्यूम राइट फ्रॉम एज थ्री वेन चिल्ड्रेन कम टू स्कूल दे विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू टॉयज एंड अदर एक्टिविटीज विच आर लोकल विच हैज लोकल फॉर and which will ultimately convert into or translate into something that they can con- see the relevance in the society when they go up they can choose their own subjects so imagine a girl who is 8 years and is interested in dance so she can say i will take dance but i like mathematics so i'll do mathematics and economics or painting or any other subject two languages and she can continue with that what will happen when the girl goes to secondary she will pass with secondary uh, 10th or 12th we have done away with the 10th board the policy says it will be a four year secondary education so 12th this girl will pass with dance mathematics and painting who will be this child she will be a dancer who will be giving performances in the society she can uh, work on the internet arrange her programs in towns or cities or even abroad perhaps if we have one lakh such boys and girls coming up with good training in dance painting agriculture or other areas they can become global best dancers they will go to higher education now there also they can do dance as a subject and start researching on it i have not taken up the issue of uh, multiple entry and exit but then perhaps after doing 2 years of studies in dance she can exit the system practice it for a couple of years come back and join the third year this is the autonomy that the students want i have been talking to student and say why was not it why was this not there when i was a student they are feeling jealous so in the times to come perhaps we will find a student who joins us foundation stage uh, institution will start playing with toys or doing things which he or she like take a case of carpentry a child gets interested in working with uh, wood and carpentry and that is why what we have said is in the school 10 days of bagless attachment will be done in in an industry or elsewhere so perhaps the child goes to a carpenter's shop floor and stays there for 10 days watching the carpenter and gets interested so during the school days one will make simple simple artifacts or simple furniture perhaps when one goes to secondary will start designing new furniture instead of ikea coming into india perhaps indian sharma and furniture will go global so this child will go to the higher education and start working on it after 2 years exit the system establish one's own um, shop floor or company work for 2 3 4 years come back and do the third year look at the autonomy that is in built in the system now the child can come back in the third year after a few years what happens if the child does 4 years and goes out one can work with it write a report on the experiences submit it and get a masters degree it's it will not be compulsory any more to study for 5 years 3 years undergraduate 2 year post graduate and then get a, a masters degree one can submit a report on the basis of one's experiences and get a degree however if one wants to continue one can continue with integrated 5 year program look at the flexibility i will quickly mention uh, about the flexibility in teacher education the the policy has now made it compulsory based on the mohammad akhtar siddiqui committee report that the teacher education will be four year compulsory and 2030 onwards every teacher who wants to join a teaching profession will have to have a four year degree program but then someone who has done graduation and never knew about or never got interested about in teaching passes the graduation and that's get inter- interested in the school like giju bhai vadeka who was a lawyer but suddenly got interested in schooling and came to a school and said let me teach so 
the provision for them is also open. Two years of B.A. program, they can join. Or somebody who is an established musician or a painter, and he or she wants to go and work with young children to inculcate all these in the, in, in, in competencies in children. What happens to them? Would he or she not be allowed? They will have to do one year B.A. Look at the flexibility and autonomy of the system. They can do that, one year B.A. and come and join a teaching profession. They may not be teaching, teaching the regular subjects, but then they would be teaching the areas of arts and creative areas. Similarly, someone who, who, is, who is good in army or things like that can also come. I would also like to mention one great element that has been infused in this. Why would those who have done great contribution to society and areas of knowledge cannot not join teaching like somebody who has been in the army or who is a retired doctor or an engineer. They have great knowledge corpus. They have great experience. We have built in a system of mentorship. They would be able to join a school. They will be joining a school or college and be there for school. Perhaps those who are relevant for school education, for those who are relevant for higher education, they can come and join and stay there and contribute. Philanthropy has been a great strength of Indian education. The society supported the education system. We never had government imposing. The government wants and intends to come out of it. I, I'm sure you would have read it, but then read 9.2H, suboptimal governance and leadership of higher education. The government has no intention to control education. It wants to give that autonomy and let the professionals experiment with students and come up. So the local college will do it. I'm sure um, we don't have much time. I would like to take your questions and answer your questions because there's so much about national education policy that can be talked about and there are so many questions. But I will only end by summarizing right from age 3 to age 22, 23, the student will have the autonomy to decide on subjects that one would like to do, the way one would like to do. The teacher will have the autonomy to decide on curriculum with the support of the General Education Council, which will be a body of experts and which will be continuously working on different areas. Thus, these bodies will be light but tight. That's the expression that the NEP uses, light but tight. At the moment, we have very heavy bodies which decide on many things. No, this, the, the Higher Education Commission of India verticals will be light, but they will be working with experts in different areas and they will be giving very exact or um, specific guidelines to departments to work on. So we don't expect the curriculum of the local colleges, the small colleges, which do not have many staff members to slip, but with the help of GEC, they will be designing their curriculum. I hope you can get the feel of it. At the end, I will say, this is the shortest policy after Macaulay's Minutes. Macaulay's Minutes was nine pages. It's just 62 pages. Please read it. Must read it. And read it many times. There are many things put in between the lines. You must read in between the lines and appreciate. It has the teacher center stage. Ye niti sikshak ko kendra bindu me rakhti hai. मैं अगर कोई सीक्रेट रिवील नहीं कर रहा हूं जब हम लोग काम कर रहे थे इस नीति पर और लोग गए प्रधानमंत्री जी को दिखाने के लिए तो प्रधानमंत्री जी का एक ही विचार था शिक्षक ही देश को बदलेगा उसी पर भार दो वही करेगा हम नहीं ऑन सेवेंथ ऑफ अगस्त एट डेज आफ्टर द पॉलिसी वॉज अप्रूव बाय सेंट्रल कैबिनेट ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन जुलाई ही एड्रेस द टीचर्स फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एनी प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज डन दैट एंड ही टोल्ड द टीचर्स वी हैव गिवन यू द पॉलिसी but it is your policy. You have to own it. It is our policy. Friends, teachers, fellow teachers, let us own it and let us implement it. It's a great policy which will transform India into Bharat 2040 and which will be autonomous like the dream institution of any country. A document from UGC has finally come out. Combination of two committees, which is about multidisciplinary institutions and multidisciplinary departments. And the second committee was chaired by our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nagasur Rauji, in which uh, uh, I was also a member of the committee. And those two have been combined in that document, and the document is out. And you should get hold of a copy of that document, because those eventually become regulations in the future. 
and uh, 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 the Higher Education Commission of India coming up. And these, all these, including choice-based credit system, outcome-based learning, open distance learning regulations, uh, uh, international overseas uh, cross-border educational de delivery regulations, so all these that have come up, uh, multiple entry and exit, multidisciplinary, all these would eventually become part of that. They, we, they will not withdraw, they can be modified in the future. So with this, I thank you, Professor Shamaji, for a very interesting and a very well-articulated and uh, uh, presentation.